Uh, hello everyone. Uh, there are two types of working substance we wish to study in thermodynamics. We have ideal gas and pure substances. And we describe the two of them as uh, for the pure substances, it is a working substance whose chemical composition remains the same even there even if there is a change in phase undergoing thermodynamic process. A good example of a pure substance is water. So water remains H2O in solid, in solid uh, liquid and gaseous state. However, for ideal gas, uh, ideal gas is a working substance which remains in gaseous state during its operating cycle. So the most common example of an ideal gas is air. So even if you heat up or compress or expand air, it remains in gaseous state. So the properties of an ideal gas can be described by means of ideal gas uh, equation of state, which is in terms of mass we have uh, we have pressure, I mean absolute pressure times the volume equals to the mass of the substance uh, multiplied by its ideal gas constant and its absolute temperature. And in terms of numbers, in terms of moles, we have uh, pressure times volume equals to the number of moles of the substance times the universal gas constant times the uh, absolute temperature so P is uh, the pressure must be absolute pressure then V is for volume of the gas N is for the number of moles of gas R is the ideal gas constant while R bar is the universal gas constant uh, then we have for the temperature must be absolute temperature uh, every uh, gas or every ideal gas has its own unique ideal gas constant uh, but for the universal gas constant we only have one universal gas constant then ideal gases are governed by these general gas laws from which certain property are held constant when a gas undergo a change of state. Uh, the first uh, gas law is we have uh, Boyle's law. Uh, Boyle's law states that if the temperature remains constant within a closed system, the volume of the gas varies inversely with the pressure during the change of state. So in uh, proportionality statement, we have the volume is inversely proportional with pressure. And if we want to put it in equation form, so we just have to cross multiply it, then uh, mul multiply it with a proportionality constant. And if we simplify this uh, proportionality constant, uh, if the uh, if the substance or the a gas undergo from state one to state two, so the resulting equation will be we have the uh, the volume at state two over the volume at state one is equals to the pressure at state one over the pressure at state two. So, next uh, gas law is we have Charles law. Uh, for Charles law, if the pressure remains constant within a closed system, the volume of the gas varies directly with the temperature during the change of state. So, this time, pressure is constant and volume is directly proportional to temperature. So, in proportionality statement, we have volume is directly proportional to temperature and if we put it in uh, equation form so we have uh, v1 over v2 is equals to v 
uh, t sub 1 over t sub 2. So, next would be uh, Gay-Lussac's law. For Gay-Lussac's law, it, uh, it states that uh, the pressure of an ideal gas if held at a constant volume is directly proportional to its temperature at any change of state. So, this time, for Gay-Lussac's law, we have a constant volume and and pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. So in proportional in proportionality cons I mean statement we have pressure is directly proportional to temperature and in equation we have P sub one over P sub two equals to T sub one over T sub two. And we have the combination of the three laws. Uh, we have the combined gas law. And for combined gas law, uh, the only constant here is the um, mass of the substance and its ideal gas constant. So, uh, the equation would be P1, P1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2 and it is uh, the constant is uh, mass and ideal gas constant. And like I said a while ago, uh, every uh, substance has its unique uh, ideal gas constant or specific gas constant R. And to determine the ideal gas constant, uh, we have this equation. Uh, ideal gas constant is equal to the universal gas constant uh, divided by its molecular weight. And also, uh, we only have one universal gas constant. And, and later, I will uh, introduce to you the value of the universal gas constant so r is ideal gas constant r bar is universal gas constant and m is the molecular weight of the gas or substance and for the universal gas constant r bar so like i said earlier uh, we only have one fixed value for the universal gas constant uh, and the value of the universal gas constant R bar in SI unit is we have 8.314 kilojoules per kilomole or kilogram mole Kelvin and in English units we have uh, 1545 uh, foot pound force per pound mole uh, degree rankan and to determine the molecular the, mo the molecular weight of the gas so we just have to multiply each standard atomic weights uh, and each number of atoms so uh, for example uh, oxygen exists in atmosphere as uh, O2 so meaning it is consists of uh, two atoms and and if we multiply it by its uh, standard atomic weight the atomic weight of oxygen oxygen is uh, 16 then multiplied by its number of atoms so the result will be 32 uh, kilogram per uh, kilomole and uh, last among the general gas laws is we have the Avogadro's law uh, which states that uh, the principle states that one mole of any ideal gas always occupies uh, the same volume at constant pressure and temperature so for Avogadro's law so this time 
uh, pressure and temperature are both constant so if we uh, apply the combined gas law so the the pressure and i mean pressure and temperature will just cancel out which uh, what will remain is uh, the volume and its number of moles so and at standard temperature pressure so for every one pound mole uh, it occupies uh, the gas occupies 359 cubic uh, feet while in for one kilogram mole the gas occupies 22.4 cubic meter so for our first example uh, we will try to apply the uh, ideal gas equation of state to uh, determine the uh, the unknown properties of this given uh, substance so uh, for our first for our first problem we have uh, 5 grams of neon is at 256 millimeter mercury and at a pressure of 35 degrees I, I mean at a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius uh, what is the volume in liters so first is we have to uh, write all the given so first is we have a given pressure of 256 millimeter mercury then uh, the mass of the neon is uh, 5 grams then the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius then whereas I also uh, since we have to apply the ideal gas equation of state here so we must also identify its uh, molecular weight and the molecular weight of neon is 20 kilograms per kilogram mole then what we're asked here is to solve for the for the volume of the substance in liters so since we're not uh, we're not ID given here is not the standard uh, units we use in use uh, in applying the ideal gas equation of state so we have to convert each unit to each standard unit so for the pressure so 256 mm hg so if you want to convert it to kilopascal so for every 101.325 kilopascal so the equivalent of it is 760 millimeter mercury so millimeter mercury will cancel out so that we have uh, 34.13 kilopascal or in kilonewton per square meter we have 34.13 then uh, for mass we have uh, 5 grams so we just divide it by 1000 to obtain uh, 0 0.005 kilograms then uh, for each temperature so uh, the temperature should be in absolute temperature so that's why we are we add 273 so uh, uh, before we solve for the volume uh, from the formula for the ideal gas equation of state so we need the ideal gas constant of this this substance so that's why we have the we have to use the formula for ideal gas constant which is R bar or the universal gas constant constant divided by its molecular weight so the universal gas constant is 8.314 kilojoules per kilogram mole Kelvin then divided by the molecular weight so kilograms I mean kilogram mole will, will cancel out so that the ideal gas constant of neon is is equal to 0 0.4157 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin 
So, after we solve for each ideal gas constant, we can now apply the apply, uh, ideal gas constant equation of state, which is uh, PB is equals to MRT. So, the pressure of the uh, neon gas is 34.13 kN per square meter uh, times the volume equals to its mass 0 0.005 kg times its ideal gas constant which is 0 0.4157 kJ per kg Kelvin times its uh, absolute temperature 308 Kelvin then uh, we uh, for every 1 kN meter, we have 1 kJ. So, kJ will cancel out. Uh, the same with kN. Then, the temperature Kelvin. So, we have, and we if we cross multiply uh, the area, square meter times meter, we can, uh, we obtain the volume, which is 0 0.0187. 6 cubic meter and if we um, multiply it by 1000 liters uh, because uh, 1 cubic meter is 1000 liters so the answer would be uh, 18.76 liters so for our next item uh, the pressure of an automobile tire is measured to be 200 kilopascal gauge before the trip and uh, 220 kilopascal gauge after uh, the trip at a location where the atmospheric pressure is 90 kilopascal. So, if the temperature of the air in the tire before the trip is 25 degrees Celsius, uh, the air temperature after the temp I mean, after the trip is, so we're asked to solve for the final temperature up after the trip. So, the given R, first is we have the initial pressure, uh, we have 200 kilopascal gauge, and its final pressure is 220 kilopascal gauge. Then, the atmospheric pressure is also given as 90 kilopascal, and the initial temperature we have 25 degrees Celsius. So what we're asked here is to solve for the uh, air temperature in the tire after the trip. So uh, take note when we are dealing with or when we are using the ideal gas equation of the state, uh, pressure and temperatures temperature should be in absolute. So uh, for the pressure, so we have to add uh, the pressure, uh, the initial pressure, and the final pressure by its atmospheric pressure. So we have 200 plus 90, so we have 290 kilopascal absolute. And for the final temperature, I mean pressure, so we have 220 plus 90 equals to 310 kilopascal absolute. Then for the temperature, so we just have to add it by 273, so we have 298 kilo, I mean Kelvin. And then after that, so since uh, we assume that the automobile tire is rigid or it means uh, the the tire uh, is indestructible so it doesn't change in shape so that's why we apply the gay lussacs law or we held a uh, volume as constant so applying the gay lussacs law we have p sub 1 over p sub 2 equals to t sub 1 over t sub 2 then we substitute the given so we have uh, for P1 we have 290 kilopascal and for P2 we have 310 kilopascal then the temperature is 298 Kelvin then we are asked to solve for the final temperature. So the answer would be 318.55 Kelvin and in 
uh, degree Celsius so we just have to uh, subtract this temperature by 273 so we have 45.45 I mean 45.55 degree Celsius and then uh, for every substance uh, different amounts of heat is required to increase its temperature and this required heat is what we call the specific heat and uh, specific heat is a thermal property that measures the heat required to increase the temperature of one unit of thermodynamic substance by one degree and for the specific heat at constant volume so we have the formula uh, specific heat at constant volume is equal to the differential of its uh, internal energy divided by its uh, the differential of its uh, absolute temperature then if we uh, integrate uh, this equation so uh, we will arrive with the formula for the change in internal energy and change in internal energy is equal to the product of its mass so earlier uh, u here is specific energy that's why we uh, we write it in uh, in small letter so since we uh, multiply it by the mass so that's why we have the total uh, internal energy so for the uh, change in internal energy it is equal to the product of the mass times the specific heat at constant volume times its change in temperature and for the specific heat at constant pressure so we have we have uh, Cp is equals to we have the differential of the enthalpy specific enthalpy over the differential of the temperature and again we if we integrate this equation the result will be the formula for the change in enthalpy which is uh, the product of the mass the uh, specific heat at constant pressure and the change in temperature so uh, where uh, change in u is the change in, in internal energy in kilojoules h change in h is change in enthalpy in kilojoules uh, temperature is absolute temperature in kelvin m is for mass and c is for the specific heat uh, in kilojoules per kilogram kelvin then we also have the ratio of its specific heat which is the specific heat ratio of k so simply the specific heat ratio is the ratio of the specific heat at constant pressure over its the specific over its con the each specific heat at constant volume and uh, take note we have here the common values for the specific heat ratio is we have uh, K is equals to 1.4 for, for cold air and uh, K is equals to 1.3 for hot air and K is, is equals to 1.67 for uh, helium so let's now uh, derive the relationship of the basic properties of ideal gas so our working equation will be so for from the formula of the change in enthalpy the change in enthalpy is equals to the change in internal energy plus the change in flow work which is change in pressure times the volume then uh, let's substitute the formula for each term here so the formula for the change in enthalpy is 
uh, MCP delta T. Then for the change in internal, we have MCB delta T. Then uh, for the flow work or the change in flow work, we have change in PV equals to MR change in T. And as you can notice, we have common terms here. So we can cancel out the common terms. So that the, the result would be, so this will be the our first formula on the relationship among the uh, basic properties of ideal gas. So we have C, C, CP is equal to CB plus R. So next uh, relation is we have, so from the formula for the specific heat ratio, we have CP over CB and can and this uh, equation can be expressed as so we can isolate CP so we uh, once we isolate CP we have uh, CP is equals to KCB then we can uh, substitute CP from the formula CP is equals to CB plus R so the this equation becomes uh, KCB so your CP is KCB equals to CV plus R and uh, isolating CV so the result would be CV is equals to R over K minus 1 so if you have uh, the value of R and K so you would be able to solve for CV then uh, in how about if we if we solve for CP so again from the relationship or from the formula for the specific heat ratio so we have CP over CV so uh, this uh, equation can be expressed as CV is equal to CP over K so we just have to uh, cross multiply to isolate CV then again uh, we use again the first uh, relation we have CP is equal to CV, CV plus R so we substitute CV here so the result will be uh, CP is equal to CP over K plus R then after that we isolate CP so CP would be uh, RK over K minus 1 okay so we have uh, the uh, the following relationships we have CP is equal to CV plus R you can also use this one K is equal to CP over CV then we have CP is equal to RK, R over K minus 1 then CP is equal to RK over K minus 1 uh, here are the following values for gas constant R, C, P, C, B, and K of some common gases. So, uh, let's say we have for air. I air has an ideal gas constant of 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilo kilogram Kelvin. Then, for C, P, we have 1.005. And C, V, we have, we have 0 0.718. And for its specific heat ratio, we have 1.4. So let's say we have a problem. So we just have to refer from this table. So this uh, this table is for uh, SI unit. Then next would be the uh, the table for the gas constants uh, for English units. So let's now apply the basic properties of ideal gas to solve this uh, problem. So we have for an ideal gas, R is equal to 0 0.277 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and K is equal to 1.384. So where, where as what are the values of CP and CV? Next is what mass of this gas would occupy a volume of 0 0.425 cubic meter 
at 517.11 kilopascal absolute and 26.7 degrees Celsius. Then, uh, we are also asked if 31.65 kilojoules are transferred to this gas at constant volume in B, what are the resulting temperature and pressure? So, first thing is we have to uh, write all the given. So, we have a given uh, gas constant, ideal gas constant of 0 0.277 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Then, we have the specific heat ratio as 1.384. Then, uh, the gas occupies 0 0.425 cubic meter. Then, the pressure is 517.11 kilopascal absolute and we have the temperature is 26.7 degrees celsius so p1 and t1 are uh, the initial state then we have also a given heat which is 31.65 kilojoules and we are asked to solve for a we have cp and cb then b we have for mass, then C is the final uh, pressure and temperature. So first is we solve for the CP and CV. So to solve for CP and CV, we will just have to apply the form, uh, their formula. So for CP, we have C, CP is equal to RK over K minus 1. Since we already have R and K, so we can just directly substitute it from the formula. So, R is 0 0.277 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, while your K is 1.384. So, the result is uh, the CP of the gas is equal to 0 0.9984 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And for CV, again, uh, applying the formula for CV, which is R over K minus 1, then we substitute all the given. So, the CV the resulting CV is equals to uh, 0 0.7214 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Then, uh, for the mass, so since we have a given pressure, volume, and temperature, so we can just apply the ideal gas equation of state, which is uh, PV is also MRT, then the given pressure is Y1 7.11 kN per square meter then the volume is 0 0.425 cubic meter so uh, we're asked to solve for mass then your R is 0 0.277 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and the temperature is 26.7 degrees Celsius then we have to add it by 273 to convert it to absolute uh, temperature then uh, solving for the mass, so uh, cubic meter and square meter, so it will cancel out. So what will remain is in meter. So kilo kilonewton meter is kilojoules, so kilojoules will also cancel out. Then for Kelvin, so we have uh, we have to cancel out Kelvin. So what will remain is in kilograms. So the resulting mass would be uh, 2.65 kilograms. So, for the resulting pressure and temperature, so we have a given uh, heat, then since the process occurs at constant volume, so we can actually uh, use the formula for heat at constant volume, which is MCP delta T. And uh, we have the given heat as 31.65 kilojoules, then the mass is 2.65 kilograms. CV is what we uh, got earlier, 0 0.7214 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Then the given uh, initial temperature is 26.7. Then the final uh, temperature is T sub 2. So the resulting temperature is 43.25 degrees Celsius. So I didn't uh, convert it to Kelvin since uh, for temperature difference, uh, absolute temperature is the same as the gauge temperature then for the final pressure again we just have to apply the 
uh, ideal gas equation of state which we have uh, PV is equal to MRT so the final pressure is P, P2 then the volume is constant so that's why we have 0 0.425 cubic meter then for mass is 2.65 then the gas const constant is 2.77 then the final temperature is 43.25 plus 273 so the resulting pressure is 546.22 kilopascal